Okay, um, we got some uh, some of these new Allen carp hooks in. Uh, really cool hooks. I mean, these are just super stout hooks. Um, if any of you bend one of these out on a carp, please let us know because we want to see these kind of fish you're catching. But anyway, you can see it's it's slightly offset. Um, this one's the MP002 size one. And uh, I've also been tying some like low fat minnows on this and it's a really, really cool hook. It's got a really aggressive hook point. Um, and then there's one similar to this that's barbless that we use as well. But anyway, we're going to tie a, a carp fly we've been playing with for a little bit. It's called the butt muncher. And you'll see why in just a second. But uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some barbell eyes on it. I think that's the key to a good carp pattern because barbell eyes will turn it upside down you'll be able to put that right down in the mud where they're feeding um we're going to put on some montana fly sparkle eyes this is gold with sparkle yellow in size medium i've got montana fly three yacht thread in pink and that's going to kind of add a, a little bit of a hot spot on the fly So we're going to put the, the barbell eyes pretty close to the, the hook eye. And one thing to, to consider also is when you're dealing with carp, you're dealing with a species that has very, very sensitive uh, sense of smell, I should say. So usually I would tag some super glue on this, but I'm not going to do it on this fly. In fact, when you fish carp flies, first thing you should do is just take them and rub them in the weeds and the mud to get any unnatural sense out of them. Anyway, I'm going to just take my thread back and instead of stopping right here I'm going to take my thread a little bit further back and this is where our first tie-in point is going to be. Now if I just let my thread hang here it kind of slips down the, the shank of the hook like that. So if I turn it on on its side um, it will hang right where I want it to be. The next step of this fly is uh, tying in some ultra chenille. So we've got this uh, ultra chenille standard size. This, this is called worm brown. We're going to treat this a little bit. Uh, first thing we're going to do is singe it. I'm just going to take a lighter and I'll put the fly down just for, for demonstration's sake. So just barely move the lighter into it to kind of turn it into a point. And then uh, we're going to take some of this Loon UV fly paint in orange. We're just going to touch, paint up the, the tip of it a little bit. So, you know, a little bit of the, the paint goes a long way. So just about like that. And then I'm going to hold it upright and just kind of give it a chance to, to seep down in. It's pretty thick stuff, so it probably won't move very much. And we'll just zap it. You see how much UV reflectance we already have with this fly. Okay, so we're going to take maybe about, you know, the length of the whole body of the fly. And that's where we're going to make our tie-in point with this. Tie it all the way down to almost the barbell eyes. Okay. Now we're just going to attach some chenille. Um, we're just using this uh, sparkle chenille. This is called uh, lime olive speckled chenille. So we're just going to wrap that forward. we get about right here and we're going to leave a little bit of space right behind the eyes. The collar of this bug is going to be uh, some Coq de Leon hen saddle. Um, if you don't have this exact 
color or kind of saddle hackle or, or hen hackle, that's fine. I mean, you can adjust this fly to, to a bunch of different colors and it will look great still. So I'm going to take this feather and I'm going to tie it in tip first. So I'm going to prepare a tie-in point for it. About right here. Trim that off. All right. And this is going to be messy. I mean, it's going to go all over the place right now, and that's fine. So I get that wrapped up and tie that off. And just cut off the stem. Now I'm going to grab all these fibers and pull them back. If I can get a hold of them without jabbing myself on this hook. And just wrap them down. there we go that's about how it's gonna look so far in the water okay now I'm gonna take some tan or cinnamon colored ice stub kinda of pull it out and I'm gonna preen it a little bit and we're just gonna tie a little bit on the bottom of this fly just kinda of like that and then even a little bit more sparse amount right on the top of the fly. So you see I'm just tying that in and then folding it over. So that just kind of gives it a, a UV element over the top of the fly. Now I'm going to take some more eye stub and just figure eight that in between the eyes. Just kind of work that through and the thread will show through a little bit and that's completely fine. That will actually enhance the look of the fly. So for the very last step I'm going to build up a pretty pronounced head because I won't really want that thread to be showing. Okay, the final step is just to pick out a little bit of that dubbing. Not super critical that you get it completely picked out. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, super easy fly to tie. Doesn't take a lot of time. As you can see, that, that fly really has a nice profile. Um, It'll st sit up on its head just like this in the water, and then that, that little uh, butt is going to stick way up in the air, kind of enticing the fish to come and eat that little UV knob on it, or, or so we hope. But anyway, good looking carp fly. Give it a try. Let us know how it does for you.